Hello, where we left the last episode in the ozone, we were using a air pump to pump the generator and that seemed to work reasonably well. We were getting over 200 milligrams an hour, which is a lot less than the three grams per hour it was advertised as. So the goal is of course to improve upon that. When I went to turn on the equipment, it's been like two weeks since I made the video, um, I noticed that this cord is completely stuffed. Now, uh, this circuit doesn't turn on, this uh, had a light and this doesn't turn on either. So this is broken already. So someone on my Discord did send me a warning very early on. He said, oh, there's something wrong with your circuitry, blah, 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 MOSFET, diode reverse i didn't understand any of it so i was kind of like yeah whatever fam but that may have been the reason i don't know enough about electronics to say whether that's correct or not or that's actually that's actually happened anyway that's kind of beside the point because one of the main conclusions i got from the comment section is that everyone across the board thinks i should be using an aquarium pump rather than an air pump i didn't really realize there was such a distinction between pump types but this is why it's great doing these kind of projects uh, and I get a lot of feedback from people and I take it on board. Using an aquarium pump will be a lot better. We'll be able to actually bubble the gas through deeper water because there's it's better at handling pressure differentials. It'll be a lot quieter and it can run for a lot longer periods of time without breaking. So I have ordered an aquarium pump and it will turn up in a couple of weeks, I suppose. I don't have a pump, but I do have now an oxygen bottle. Look at that. There's a whole bottle of oxygen. Holy shit. I think one of the aims for the ozone generator project was that we would get lots of an oxidizer for virtually free because we would be taking it from the air. So getting an oxygen cylinder kind of deviates off that path quite a lot because it was reasonably pricey. So this big cylinder here was $130, which actually all things considered is actually a reasonable price. Um, there's no rental on this cylinder, but I did have to pay a deposit of $300 for the cylinder, but there's no time limit on that. And that's just from Bunnings in Australia. So Bunnings isn't going to fail as a company. So um, I'll be able to return that even in 10 years. So that's fine. I won't worry too much about the deposit. This is an oxygen regulator. This was a bit more of a rip off. This was 80 bucks or something like that for the regulator, but you can't really skimp out on the regulator. You need something good. Ooh, very nice. All right, so the new pump is here. It's uh, this brand which says it came from Australia, but I don't believe it for one second. It's all really quite good, except for the fact that it kind of came with the international plug and they've just given me a really shitty adapter to cope with it. But hey, I guess it works most of the time, so can't complain that much, I suppose. So this whole thing was uh, 30 bucks, so I got the pump, the adapter to plug it in, the tubing, um, two air stones and two one-way valves, which we'll um, deal with later. Why it's got two outputs is because you're kind of limited in uh, airflow volume per kind of pump, so it's a lot easier to just have two pumps and then you increase your airflow a lot. Also, if I want to upgrade this system later on, what I could do is I could grab a second ozone tube and run two ozone tubes in, in parallel rather than um, having one big ozone tube. But for now, I'll probably combine these two because there's only one input into our ozone tube, so I'll have to combine these two tubes. Chuck it on. You can see that is, is a lot better than the other pump. And we can see it doesn't struggle at all with the pressure of the water. It doesn't, um, you know, the flow doesn't stop when it goes below a certain level of water. Um, we've got an adjustable thing here so we can turn up the pump. I don't think it changes it that much. Oh, a little bit. So it's apparently 5.4 litres per minute, which is quite a, quite a good airflow. So that's the maximum. We turn it down and um, I think that's really quite good. I think in all regards, I gotta give it to the comment section for telling me to buy this type of pump rather than the other pump. All right, I've got it working. It's sitting in the shade over here because it's a black cylinder and it's like 30 degrees. If we come over here, turn our regulator up a little bit. Yeah, see, and then we've got some medical oxygen tubing. You know, the things you just have lying around. Fits well onto this, comes through here, fits excellently onto our ozone generator. A real strong flow of ozone coming out of that. Well, oxygen at the moment, it's not plugged in. You can get really high flows of oxygen. You know, um, heaps of flow if we really wanted to, but um, a small steady stream is probably really, really good. So apart from the oxygen cylinder, the other part of 
this video, I suppose, is making this ozone generator actually a practical setup. It's been sprawled all over the lab bench, um, you know, with different plugs everywhere. It's been a bit of a mess. The idea is to get a box just like this one and fit everything into it so that when I want ozone for a certain reaction, I just get the box out of storage and plug it in and put the tubing into the reaction mix. I don't have to find, you know, five different separate bits and then connect them all up. So what have we got in here? Fish pond pump, the uh, transformer, we've got a power board. This is the, the pump, it has to have the adapter because it's a, you know, a different plug, um, the ozone power. Um, I'm going to prop the tube up on some wood so it doesn't sit against the plastic. It actually sits, you know, with a bit of elevation. And then the final piece, which I don't have, will be a fan as a cooling fan uh, to blow air through here. Especially this gets really hot on the top here. So it'll cool the tube down and also uh, this transformer. So you'll have to cut some air vents in here and in here. So the air will go through like this. I've also glued this Teflon tubing onto here and the Viton tubing fits snugly over the top of these two so that's a much better connection than it was before. I and mean, this fish one pump just as the input in here or um, the oxygen can just go straight into there as well. Another suggested purchase for this project was an air stone. A lot of people wanted an air stone to increase the efficiency of the bubbles actually going into the water. So I've got two of them. One of them's here. It's just attached to the Teflon tubing with some Teflon tape. And this goes into our other Teflon tubing that's slightly bigger. This just slots into here like this. Easy, and that's just all Teflon joints. Viton tubing is connected well to here. That's hot glued in. Yeah, put a little pressure in the line. Oxygen comes in flows through here and then it comes out here. The light's failing on me but we've got everything set up so let's let's turn to three quick titrations. Three equal sort of iodine solutions. Got the oxygen cylinder there, the air stone so uh, nothing is holding us back. First of all let's get the oxygen flowing. Oh amazing. Yeah how good's that? It's pretty good. Yeah, not, not more you could want with that. All right, shall we do it? Three, two, one. Yes. This last one I put quite a bit of iodide in um, because I'm going to run it for a couple of minutes. That one was one minute, and two minutes. This one will be, oh, let's say six minutes. So I stopped it after five minutes. We got one, two, and five, and I'll add a bit of acid to each of these ones to break the iodate into free iodine. So the titrated values for the grams of ozone per hour for the one minute was 0.88 grams per hour, for the two minutes was 0.77 grams per hour, and for the five minutes was 0.66 grams per hour. I have no idea why the numbers came out to be perfect like that, but they did. They are not three grams per hour, not even close. It's still less than one gram an hour. So in conclusion, the eBay listing is false. To quote three grams an hour, it's just not achievable. So the obvious next question is, is the oxygen cylinder actually worth it? Well, if we do the calculations, we see that the 0.88 to 0.66 number is really only a little bit over five times the value we get when we just use the air pump. Seeing as the air is only roughly about one fifth of oxygen, it seems that we're getting the same efficiency in terms of oxygen put in to ozone out. Even though there's all these other factors such as humidity and nitrogen and that sort of thing, it seems like, roughly speaking, we're getting the same level of efficiency of conversion of oxygen to ozone. People keep mentioning that nitrogen oxides might be a big issue. In fact, the nitrogen gets converted into nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and that might screw with some reactions. That's true, and we might have reactions that are particularly sensitive to that. And in that case, the oxygen cylinder is a great thing. But I think in the most part, the air pump should be fine. All right, so where's all this at? Well, we got the air pump and we're actually only using one of its outputs. It's got two outputs here, but we're only using one. Uh, I did try and, you know, MacGyver some way using hot glue and that sort of shit of taking two tubes and then turning into one and then the input, but the flow rate seemed to drop to basically zero. And, and I think it's because we got such a tiny output here, like taking two tubes and then kind of force them into one um, really screws with the flow rate. So one seems to have quite a reasonable flow rate and if we really want to expand this later on I suppose we can get another ozone tube and I can lead another output and maybe you know have a whole another second output but for now I think one is is enough it seems to provide quite a reasonable flow rate. I still don't have the cooling system involved because that fan still hasn't turned up. The final improvement uh, I've got for this video is this here this is a auto on off timer 
and allows me to do things like turn it on for five minutes and then automatically it'll turn off, wait for 10 minutes and then it'll turn back on for five minutes. So it means like over an hour I can have it on for say 20 minutes and it will just automatically turn on and off because it can't be on for a very long time but it's quite hard to sit here and just turn it on and off for the whole day, you know? So to make it more of a bit of a streamlined automatic process, won't rely on this too much because I'm not sure how much I trust this, but um, it is a pretty useful thing. Over there, and then I can just turn it all off. So if I turn this knob, get even more flow rate. And so this is just out of the one. So all in all, I think it's running pretty well, and I think it's to the point where we might actually be able to do some reactions with it, with the whole system. Now it's it's running like this, we've got the ozone coming out, so we should actually be able to do some ozone reactions, not just titration. So that's probably what I'll try and do in the next video, as well as installing the cooling system and any other improvements we think of in the comments. So let me know how to improve this, and what you would do and change and modify. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm looking forward to see what our ozone can do.